This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. This next story is about this game called Area F2 Global Launch. Now, I don't know how many of you play the other game that I'm not naming yet, but let's take a look at their video and see what maybe we think of it. Looks like it's an infiltration game. They say it's the first close quarters combat first person shooter on mobile. And, you know, it looks an awful lot like many other first person shooters. You know, you got people in military style clothing, you know, tactical or strategic clothing. You got people with various real life m models of real life weaponry. And you've got uh, you know, a gameplay scenario that that the developers have set up. But of course, if you play Rainbow Six Siege, that looks an awful lot like Rainbow Six Siege. So at what point does it become actual copyright infringement? And that's the question that Ubisoft wants answered because they have uh, sued the eJoy dot com limited and quokka games and google and apple because it's a mobile game so the apple ios store and the google play store and so they have sued those companies over the release of that game now before we get started on that real quick let's go over what is substantial similarity what is copyright infringement in this type of case we're looking at two creative works and we're asking the question is area f2 a infringing or violating unauthorized derivative work or is it just a similar game with a similar gameplay style but otherwise not copyright infringement so real quick just for summaries purposes substantial similarity is the standard used to determine whether a defendant has infringed the reproduction right of a copyright and we use these tests um, now we did a video about this and one of the tests that we know is used is the intrinsic extrinsic test or, or rather the extrinsic intrinsic test. And what, what that is, is where a judge looks from a legal perspective, is there an objective view that the two works are substantially similar, that they have similar elements, that they're in a similar genre, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, they're both video games, they're both first person shooters, they're both military simulator type games, they're both close quarters combat, they, they both use human figures and clothing and guns and gameplay. Uh, so yeah, I think they pass the extrinsic test. And then the question will be, does a jury think that they are in fact actually substantially similar? But other ways to look at it are through the striking similarity test, which is when direct evidence of actual copying does not exist, it has to be proven indirectly. This is done by showing how the defendant had access to plaintiff's work. So access plus similarity. And in this case, they're looking at striking similarity and that the degree of similarity between the works is so striking or substantial that the similarity could only have been caused by copying and not through coincidence, independent creation, or a prior common source. So that's what people mean when they say prior art in, in copyright is a prior common source. Courts rely on uniqueness, intricacy, complexity, so remember, Tardigrades, the Anas Abdeen creation, was not detailed enough 
to infringe, or, or rather Star Trek did not infringe on Anasa Deans because Anasa Deans creation was just not detailed enough. It, it was not complex enough, intricate enough. The concept of tardigrades helping people fly through space was not protectable. But one complex, intricate, unique telling of a story like that, you know, with this character has these qualities and in the Star Trek universe and all the details of the Star Trek universe, that was enough to merit copyright protection. The plaintiff's work contains unexpected or idiosyncratic elements uh, that are repeated in the infringing work. So if there's something unique that's been copied, the appearance of the same errors or mistakes. So that's like the phone book case where they copied the fake phone numbers as well. Fictitious entries placed by the plaintiff. So that's the phone book case. Uh, obvious or crude attempts to give the appearance of dissimilarity. So like kind of a willful blindness. The other standard would be misappropriation. Substantial similarity is used by courts to determine the threshold where copying wrongfully appropriates the plaintiff's protected expression. Um, and then the tests. There is the total concept and feel test. This is the extrinsic and intrinsic tests that we've gone over before, but real quick. The it, it, extrinsic test is not based on the response of the trier effect, but on specific criteria. So it's an objective test, the type of artwork, the materials, the subject matter, the setting. So all the things that I said a moment ago. And then the intrinsic test would be the determination by a jury of whether the items or whether the, the two works are actually in fact so similar that they are substantially similar. Um, and then there's a few other tests. Uh, the inverse ratio rule is an interesting one. It's not really used for this kind of thing, but it holds that the more access the infringer has, the lower the threshold for establishing substantial similarity. We are in the Central District of California, so we're actually in a state that uses the inverse ratio rule. And so, you know, within the Ninth Circuit, so the that's where we are. And so let's take a look and see uh, uh, with that as the background, knowing that you've got a very basic understanding of what substantial similarity is, is there then substantial similarity in these two games? Ubisoft is among the world's most prominent developers. They always start like this, like we're a big company and we count, we matter is there the very first thing every one of these video game developers say. I, I'm going to, next time I have to represent someone, I'm just going to open the complaint with plaintiff matters. And just period, just plaintiff matters. Item one. Item two. Defendant does not know. <laughs> so they are the owner or developer or distributor or all three of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. I remember playing the original Rainbow Six 20 years ago, nonstop in my college dorm room. Um, actually, probably my my neighbor's dorm room because they had the double and I had a single. And so their room was bigger and we used to hang out and, and play video games, Rainbow Six among them. And they are suing for an unauthorized copy or mobile copy of Rainbow Six Siege titled Area F2. and the two internet companies, Google and Apple, involved in the distribution of those titles. The defendants are eJoy Limited and Google and Apple. eJoy is a game developer and publisher that is affiliated with Alibaba. Google, of course, has the Google Play Store and Apple, of course, has the iOS Store or the Apple App Store. The AF2 or what was it called? Uh, Area F2? Area F2 is a near carbon copy of Rainbow Six Siege, and that cannot be seriously disputed. I think it can be seriously disputed, but we'll see. Virtually every aspect of Area F2 is copied from Rainbow Six Siege, from the operator selection screen to the final scoring screen and everything in between. This copying includes the storytelling as expressed in a way in which the games unfold in real time, the player controlled operators, including their special abilities and weapons loadouts, and the selection and arrangement of those operators, the collection, selection, and arrangement of weapons, gadgets, and equipment available to players. Now, why are they saying why are they starting off with selection and arrangement? Well, it's a video game. You can't copyright the concept of a video game. You can't say nobody else can make a tactical shooter. Nobody else can make a close quarters combat shooter. You, they, they can't make a video game that is substantially similar to your close quarters combat shooter. But, but, but copyright only protects 
the original expression, which does not include facts like military people dress in military outfits, uh, combat people, you know, when people go into combat, they carry certain equipment. That equipment is certain guns that are really made in the real world. Uh, you know, the, the, the scenes will be generic scenes of, you know, a building that needs to be infiltrated. M much of that is not protectable. It's what did you choose? It, did you make a rainbow colored building and a pink gun? And did your guy wear a multicolored hat? And does it have a unicorn on a t-shirt of a very specific design? And was, were those specific elements copied? copied exactly or so substantially similar that it seems like they were just outright copied as opposed to created as a different expression. So if I make a close quarters combat first person shooter where, where my outside team infiltrates against the inside terrorists and the inside terrorists wear Middle Eastern outfits because of that stereotype and the outside people wear American military uniforms because of that stereotype and they carry Heckler and Cock guns and they wear beanies and they have tact vests, molly vests, and they have have grenades strapped to the vest and the you know if i make if i make that am i infringing no i have to then copy their expression i have to copy ubisoft's actual expression the the fact that there are people in it is not copyright infringement the fact that their military is not copyright infringement the fact that there are guns is not copyright infringement the fact that it's a first person shooter is not copyright infringement etc 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 so it's it's you have to get down to the unique complex expression of the protectable elements so i'm just trying to prime you this is up for debate so they're saying they copied user interface elements, sound effects and animations, placement and destruction of objects, scorekeeping elements. We'll have to see, it has to be the expression of the scorekeeping elements. And you'll start to see some ideas on the bottom there, some of the expression. We'll get to that in a second. Um, the combination and collection of all of these elements has resulted in a game that shares the exact same look and feel of Rainbow Six Siege and to an ordinary observer is nearly indistinguishable from Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Ubisoft has sued Apple and Google. So this is not just them trying to bowl over a small developer. First, it's the Alibaba group. Second, it's Apple and Google. So Ubisoft is serious. They're not gonna go after giants like that. They're, they're a giant themselves, but they're not gonna fight with other giants over nothing. So they really think something's going on here. Let's see. The infringement is willful and deliberate, so that, that amplifies damages. Ejoy was well aware of Rainbow Six Siege, so they're starting access there, and made a substantial effort to ensure it would look, feel, and play in a manner extremely familiar to Rainbow Six Siege players. Now that's not illegal. You're not, it's not illegal to make the game play in a familiar manner. Like, the fact that you press up on the joystick and the player walks forward is not protectable as somebody owns that. No, it has to go further. So let's see if they go further. Ejoy did so with the intent to profit from existing players. That's fine. You're allowed to do that. Even used misleadingly similar marketing materials. That's not legal. That's trademark infringement but they don't allege trademark infringement in here. They only allege copyright infringement. We'll get to it. So here's one example. Here is the Rainbow Six Siege splash screen on the left or the title screen. And there's the Area F2 screen on the right. Now, I do see some similarities. You've got a defending party on the right. You've got a breaching party on the left. You've got the coloring of the titles. Area is in white, F2 is in black. Rainbow and Siege are in uh, white and six, or at least the S in six is in black. Um, but just using white and black, just using contrasting colors is not a protectable copyright expression. Now, Area F2, has what look like hand-drawn characters. Rainbow Six Siege on the left look more photorealistic characters. Uh, I'd say that they're definitely similar, but I'm, I'm still concerned that these are not substantially similar, that the, the Area F2 is just a different expression of the same 
unprotectable concept. Uh, eJoy has been monitoring and responding to consumer feedback and has ignored scores of comments noting that the game is copied from Rainbow Six Siege. What is that? That's trademark infringement. When customers are actually confused about who's making a game, that's trademark infringement. Now, if a customer is saying, this sucks, your game is just a copy of Rainbow Six Siege, is that customer confusion? Customer doesn't sound confused at all to me. Customer sounds pissed off that they've got, you know, that they've identified, correctly identified a game that is not Rainbow Six Siege, but it's just very much like it. So I'd say that's actually evidence of no confusion. Customers see the game is from a different company and they know that it's not Rainbow Six Siege, and they know that it's a different company, so it's not trademark infringement. I'm just pointing these things out as we go. Ubisoft is informed and believes that in the short time since its release, AF2 has generated lots of money. Okay, so tens of thousands in dollars in profit. That's fine. So what? Okay, so I mean, they're going after the profits, duh. Let's skip jurisdiction and get straight to the facts. Ubisoft are video game developers and publishers, and they produce Rainbow Six Siege, millions of dollars, thousands of hours, very popular, millions of players, nominated for awards, etc. It's an original work of authorship, subject to copyright protection. Yep, of the protectable elements. Let's remember that. Um, unique and protectable expression, expressed gameplay in R6 Siege, highly specific creative manner, etc. Okay, so then they're going to go over the details. Asymmetrical team-based tactical infiltration and defense game in which players use a variety of tools, environmental features, etc. None of that itself is copyrightable. Those are the concepts on which they will then later express the game, but the concept is not, in my uh, professional opinion, it, the concept is not protectable. Ten players form two teams of five operators. They're a rainbow team, different nationalities. Sp they possess characteristics, appearance, backstory, and abilities. Uh, unique pieces of equipment, primary weapon, secondary weapon, a gadget such as a such as barbed wire, bulletproof camera, or smoke grenade. It is not a reflex-based shootout, but a strategic match. Five gameplay scenarios, each with a different objective, uh, different building surfaces, drywall, wood, glass, metal. Remember, all of those are not protectable. You can put drywall in your game. Ubisoft does not own destructible drywall in a game. Ubisoft owns their destructible drywall in a game, not all destructible drywall in a game. If you go and take a photorealistic piece of drywall and put it on the wall in your game and it's textured in such a way that it just looks photorealistic, looks exactly like you would expect a piece of drywall from Home Depot to look like. Ubisoft can't sue you for that just because they went and put a piece of photorealistic drywall in their game. There, you, there is no protection in a photorealistic piece of drywall. There's protection in your photorealistic piece of drywall. So the artist that created the the drywall texture and the artist that put it as a 3D object in the game and the artist that made it destructible, these are all work for Ubisoft, so they're all the same owner. That exact bit-for-bit -bit copy belongs to them. And if Area F2 went into Ubisoft's assets, and said, this will be easier. I'll just copy their drywall model into my game. That's copyright infringement. Putting drywall on a wall where it belongs, making it destructible, and having a military guy breach it with an explosive charge or whatever is not copyright in any way. There is no protection whatsoever for that level of concept. It would have to be directly copying or substantially similar copying only of protectable elements. So in other words, the guy's helmet, the guy's gun, the guy's clothes, the fact that it's a person, those are not protectable elements. It's the it's the thing you added. So in other words, if I take a, I'm going to do it again. I, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself a million times here. But if I take like a generic black helmet and put it on my character, that's not copyright protected. But if I paint a 
series of unicorns, especially if the unicorn is unique to my gameplay or unique unique to my game and it's it's a it's a a callback a throwback or a, you know some something i designed that then always appears throughout the game or not as long as it's unique you that's protectable sure i can't copy your unicorn on a helmet but i can make my own unicorn on a helmet and that's not copyright infringement even though you also put a unicorn on a helmet so they go back into the scenarios and the building materials and the objectives and the the phases of gameplay so they're, they're trying to say that the gameplay is protectable here. I don't think so. The phases, a preparation phase and an action phase. I mean, come on, we've had preparation phases and action phases in multiplayer games, even in single player games forever. There is no protection in having a preparation phase and then a action phase, none. Uh, they talk about how the game is played, about the preparation phase and the action phase and, and how players do not respawn. Uh, there's a victory screen. These are these are Rainbow Six Siege victory screens, and then they go into the story of the characters and the operators and how they have a three tiered system for each operator's armor, speed, and difficulty. Here is the roster of operators, not unlike the heroes from Heroes of the Storm or League of Legends or or Dota 2 uh, or Overwatch. They've got their own roster. They do not own the concept of a roster in a video game. Um, then they go into specific characters like Mute, who possesses a submachine gun from Heckler and Cuck. The MP5K has a M590A1 shotgun. I don't know who makes that. A P226 Mark 25 handgun and an SMG11 machine pistol. It possesses a nitro cell explosive and a bulletproof camera. Uh, okay, I mean, so a the fact that your explosive is called a nitro cell, maybe that's protectable. But calling this a MP5K submachine gun doesn't change anything. That doesn't belong to you. It's a real world item made by a real company. And so putting it into a video game does not make you the owner of all mp5s in every video game just the model you put in yourself the fact that you put it in has nothing to do with copyright so if another company comes along and makes a close quarters combat shooter with an mp5 in a in a in an, oper in an operator's hand that's not copyright infringement so when they go over different operators uh, how they are vis visually depicted uh, and where, and their combination of skills and abilities, etc. Then there's locations. So they're going to try and say that having floors in a in in a in a house or a building is somehow their protectable expression. Again, I do not agree. You cannot copyright the fact that houses and buildings have roofs, first floors, ground floors, and basements. Also, if you're in America, the first floor is the ground floor, but I digress. Then they go into major storytelling mechanics, which they're saying is its use of destructible or partially destructible or reinforceable surfaces. I don't think those are storytelling mechanics. I, I have an open mind, though. I, I do not consider destructible surfaces part of the story. That's more of part of the gameplay mechanics. They do say mechanics up here, to be fair. Uh, they go into the weapons, 100 different firearms, different unique gadgets, dozens of tools. Some of the gadgets are entirely fictional. Okay, there we go, finally. Entirely fictional gadgets are probably protectable, at least your expression. So the Inox visor scans enemy footprints. Somebody else probably can't call it an Inox. A Gemini replicator that creates a holographic image. Somebody else probably can't call it a Gemini replicator and make it do the same thing. Although they probably don't own Gemini or replicator, it would definitely be something that, that could be considered copied if it's fully, fully uh, fictional. These other fictional devices, a cardiac sensor is not protectable. You can't say that somebody else can't make a cardiac sensor. Uh, crossbow bolts. Gas-filled glass crossbow bolts. Creative, but I don't know that that's protectable. Maybe what you call it is protectable. Maybe your visual design for it is protectable. But the fact that they are gas-filled crossbow bolts is just a concept. A portable signal jammer is not, uh, is not protectable. An invisibility cloak is not protectable. 
So then user interface and screen. So this is where there's a lot of creativity because you can make a user interface in a million different ways. They're saying that operator icons, I don't know if an operator icon is protectable, like an outline of a player's body is not a protectable element. How you made the scoreboard, sure. Like orange and blue in a trapezoidal shape like that, sure, that could be protectable at some level. If I made a video game that's already similar to yours, and then I also copied the exact interface you used and the colors, etc. Yeah, maybe that could be. But the fact that I have to put a scoreboard on the screen, likely in the upper middle, is not protectable. You know, somebody comes up with a cool game mechanic, it, it's actually not really that protectable. Okay, so here we go. Ubisoft believes that eJoy was acquired by Alibaba Group and the directors of eJoy are high-level executives. Okay, so you're trying to make the case that this, this, is, this is also an important party that you're going after. They began advertising a game in development titled Area F2, a close quarters battle first person shooter, created a YouTube account, etc., began permitting a beta test and has an APK available for download and it's on Apple's App Store and Google's Play Store. It's a free-to-play game developed by Help Shift. Oh, Help, Help Shift is the customer support entity. Okay, distribution by Apple and Google. Great, let's get to the part where it actually copies anything. So they're saying it is an unauthorized copy or clone designed to closely replicate Rainbow Six Siege and appeal to players of Rainbow Six Siege who wish to play on mobile devices. It appropriates nearly all of Rainbow Six Siege, including specific protectable elements. That would be a violation if they actually copied protectable elements. So it copies the threat elimination and demolition scenarios. Eh, is a scenario copyrightable? We have we have a military style game. Your objective is to infiltrate. Your objective is to demolish. Your objective is to eliminate the threat. Can you really say that's a protectable element of your game? No, that's a game mode. That is a game mechanic. I guess it could be an element towards a larger copyright infringement lawsuit maybe so maybe maybe we'll just put it in the back of our mind as like okay well that itself isn't enough but maybe if we get how many of these things if there's um 50 if there's 50 things in common do we consider it substantial similarity and copyright infringement if there's 200 things in common if there's 2000 things in common if there's 2 million things in common uh, you know at some point it does become copyright infringement so maybe that's what they're doing is just trying to like add all the little things um, AF2 players form two teams of five operators. Again, I don't think copyrightable. P uh, they each possess tools, a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, and a gadget. Again, not copyrightable, I don't think. Um, a preparation phase. They have drones that have wheels and they can roll around and detect enemies. They can make small jumps but have a cooldown after each jump. Again, none of that I think is copyrightable. It's your drone. Did they take your model from your game or did they make their own and just make a game that is similar to yours? Um, they set barricades, reinforce walls, set trap, lay barbed wire. All sounds like a video, like any video game, not a copy. When you've been spotted, they say you have been spotted. These are their arguments for copyright infringement. Also, by the way, they've taken 26 pages to get to this, so concise writing, not so much. Uh, following the preparation phase is the action phase, so they're claiming that as well. During the action phase, players have access to unique tools, weapons, equipment, including gas and smoke grenades, crossbar, crossbows, barbed wire, remote drones, booby traps, deployable turrets, and shields. I mean, are they going to sue Overwatch for having turrets as well? I, that's not how this works destructible walls, windows, barriers, etc. Let's see. Okay, so here we're finally getting into it. What do we have here? We have the Rainbow Six Siege operators on the left and the AF2 agents on the right. And I really have to ask, are we kidding? These are two different expressions. It's the same mechanic you have to choose an operator. You have to choose an agent. They changed the name from operators to agents. They changed the name of these individual people 
so they, here they're belying here's ubisoft belying their own copyright suit on the left is a guy named smoke on the right is a guy named swamp are we really saying that no video game developer can ever make a, a, an operator or, or player character that has a gas mask? What else is similar about these two? First off, a gas mask is a normal piece of military equipment. So you don't have any ownership of, quote, quote unquote, a player wearing a gas mask. Second, the guy on the left, the Rainbow Six player is holding a shotgun and the player on the right is holding a smoke bomb or can't even really see because he's obscured by his yellow smoke. The player on the left doesn't have a smoke bomb going off in their picture. Whereas the player on the right has a, has a smoke bomb or, or yellow, whatever, yellow cloud of gas coming out of something is not the same thing. The fact that one's wearing a black Molly vest and the other one's wearing a, a, a camo or or olive green olive drab molly vest is not protectable expression let's keep going here's capkin on the left and wolf on the right capkin on the left has a hood and wolf on the right has a hood these are not substantially similar these are not protectable elements capkin on the left is carrying some kind of weapon i can't quite see what it is G36 maybe, um, and Wolf on the right is holding a detonator maybe? It's kind of pixelated. So here's other, here's icons. So they say that Rainbow Six Siege uses a turret icon on the left and Area F2 has a turret icon on the right. Okay, I mean a turret looks like a turret so they're just drawing two different versions of something that actually exists and they're drawing their own illustrated icon for it. Again, I don't see any copyright infringement here. Again, a crossbow looks like a crossbow. Just because it looks like a crossbow doesn't mean it's protectable. It's your expression. Is the one on the right an exact duplicate of the one on the left? No, I don't think so. They made their own version of what a crossbow looks like. Why in the world would Ubisoft think that they own an extendable shield, a signal disruptor, a, a taser or shocker, a thermite charge, or an EMP grenade. These are actual military concept weapons, even if we don't have an EMP grenade in real life that I know of. Uh, even if, I mean, but we do have thermite charges. I'm just not sure that they're like, you throw them at somebody. I'm not sure how it works. I don't play Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, it's a great, I'm sure it's a great game. I just don't play it. It's the, not my style. Um, an electric shocker, come on, like that's a real life thing that people carry every day where they can, sometimes illegally. An extendable shield is a normal police riot control device. A signal disruptor, like there was a guy arrested and charged by the FCC for having a signal disruptor in Florida, and he was driving around killing the cell phone signal of everybody around him because he thought that it helped his commute. Clever, but very illegal, and he was fined $50,000, I believe. Here is Pulse, an Intel gatherer or roam ability or operator. Yeah, this is an operator. And so they have armor, speed, and difficulty. Okay, here's the first thing that looks outright copied, the armor, speed, and difficulty part. Now, I don't think there's much protectable here. I don't think that you get to tell, I don't think you get copyright protection on the fact that operators and agents have traits. But here, look, they did almost exactly copy this. The words are in the same place. They use the same bullseye target outline icon thing. They're using three for each level or for each ability. And they have the same, well, they don't have the same levels, but they have, they have similar, that's definitely similar. If that's their entire actual copying, I, I don't think that that's strong enough. I think that's de minimis. Uh, weapon loadout screens are almost the same. Literally, almost the same is not substantial similarity. Uh, locations, cargo dock, Mexican mansion, hot springs, and Russian station. Extremely similar, they say. Okay, I'm on board. Extremely similar. Oh, but the maps are different. The maps are called Canal House Skyscraper Cafe Dostoevsky, <laughs> the Russian author, and Bank. So I don't think House and Bank and Skyscraper are, are protected. The misspellings of Cafe Dostoevsky and Canal 
would be something that would be copied over if they were copying. Um, but if you copy, if you look at bank, eh, I don't know. You're, got, you're looking at a floor plan here. These floor plans look differently. And who's added the numbers? I would need to know who added the numbers. The, the, the numbers are, I, I think the numbers make it look more similar than it is. If you look closely, let's look very closely. There's a foyer, but they're different. This one has a side room. There is a main room, but they're a little bit different. And this one is not connected the same way that that one's connected. Four and five are completely different locations. Seven is a different room. Five is completely different. Eight is in a similar location. Eight, nine, 10, 11 are in different locations, but they're different rooms. You don't have a copyright on a basic box outline of a room on a floor plan. Uh, and I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight. Like, I don't care whether it's a copyright infringement or not. I'm defending Area F2 only because it seems like they didn't actually make a copyright infringement of Rainbow Six Siege. Many objects, hallways, staircases look similar. Are you kidding me? Are you really saying that these two images, these first two images look the same? You've got spray paint on plain walls with a staircase. Here you've got a picture on the wall and a staircase. Uh, here you've got a skylight. Here you've got a skylight, but they're different skylights. They're not identical. Let's look at the interface too, because that was important, right? We, I talked. I, I complained about the interface. Um, these. This is. We've got all the interface elements here. So is there a blue and orange score at the top? No. This one's in blue. You're on the blue team. Is the color of your team copyrightable? Probably not. There's a restart and reset gadgets button in the upper right. Is that in this one? No. There is a, a button to use your knife. Is there in this one? No. There is a circle on the right, probably for your thumb, and on the left for your thumb as well. Are those on the left? No. Um, there's a guy showing that he's crouched or standing. Is that on? Is that in the same place here? No. There is a series of button icons on the bottom that show you which keys on the keyboard correspond to which items. Is that on this screen? No, but they do have a probably tap to select your shotgun or your or your pistol here. Um, there's buttons here to tap on on area F2. Uh, you probably can't see my, my my cursor too well. On the bottom right, for remote bomb or barbed wire, do those buttons appear over here? No. There's a compass nowhere in the area F2 one. There's a compass on the bottom right of the... These are, these are major differences. These are different interface elements. Surf they copied surfaces, assets, textures, and decals. Uh, I'm confused. This is some kind of object decal. I wish there was more context to this because I'm not sure what this is. That could be something that they copied. Imaginary barriers are, so so invisible barriers are, like if you can't go through this invisible door, you, it's, a, it's a red. I don't think that that's protectable, but okay. Um, the fact that the military style weapons are copied, I don't think so. You're not allowed to use the same weapon, apparently. These are normal weapons that are sold in real life that the military uses. The fictional ones have a better chance, I think. If they made a thermite grenade, even though a thermite grenade does not exist, I'm not sure that that's protectable. Maybe if they made, like they said, they had the Inox night vision. Calling your night vision Inox is probably closer to protectable expression than somebody saying that they have a thermite grenade. Uh, weapons modifications look similar. So red dots look like red dots, holographic sights look like holographic sights, reflex sights look like reflex sights, and optical sights look like optical sights. Are we kidding? Ubisoft really thinks that modeling things after what they look like in real life means that you've copied them from your competitor. I don't think so. I think they did copy. Don't get me wrong here. I think Area F2 is definitely some kind of copy of uh, it, it's meant to copy the concept and feel of Rainbow Six Siege and make it a mobile game. 
I think you're allowed to do that. I think I can go make a Tetris style game as long as it's not Tetris, as long as it does not copy the protectable elements of Tetris. If I don't call it Tetris, if I, if I, if I don't make it the same exact colors and same exact interface, but I make mine as only as functional as necessary to achieve that purpose and then not make it further the same past what's necessary to make it functional. Animations, so players reloading weapons. So apparently you're not allowed to reload a weapon in the same way that the other guy has their weapon being reloaded, even though there is only one way. Do I have my weapon? Here, I have my weapon. There is only one way to reload a weapon. It's holstered, so we're not even worried about it. There is only one way to reload. So if I make a reloading animation, have I violated Ubisoft because I reloaded my gun on camera? No. Not protectable expression. The scoreboards look different. They're different colors. They have different fonts. They're in different places. In other words, they're, they're this expanded. The, the AF2 one is expanded. Every other game has a scoreboard. Every other competitive game has a scoreboard in the top center of the screen. You do not own a scoreboard in the top center of the screen. You own the individual elements. Do they use the same rook icon? No. Do they use the same crossed swords icon? No. Do they use not just the same font, but do they use like a font that you own or do they use it in the exact same way? No, these are different fonts. This one's narrower, yours is fatter. Uh, they have more spacing between the player icons. They have question marks be uh, with the, for the players that you don't know who they are yet. There is nothing protectable about using question marks for a player you don't know who they are yet. Um, the end of match scoreboard screen uses the exact same layout. Oh my God, we found the second thing that could be copyright infringement, except still they're different. They have a trophy, they have two different trophy icons. Again, the fact that they used a trophy icon is not protectable. The fact that they're in the same order is an argument. You've got a fist icon versus an open palm icon. You've got a cross, a, a skull and crossbones as opposed to just a scroll, a, a skull. Not protectable. Maybe the selection and arrangement is protectable. Maybe for minimal copyright damages. I don't know. That does. That's about. That's the second thing I've seen that actually looks like it was copying. But again, copying a kill death ratio. That is just a concept. So how many points did you get? How many people did you kill? How many some things did you defend? And how many times did you die? I don't think that that's copyrightable. And that's definitely got prior prior art or, or, or prior sourced. There is a points and scoring system. And they're saying that they chose the same point system. OK, maybe choosing a point system that's the same could be. But what's the creativity in making a point system? I, I, there is some level of creativity, but how much protection do you get for creating a basic point system? And so total look and feel. So they're going to use that, that test that we talked about. They're going to use the, the intrinsic versus extrinsic test, this total concept and feel test. So the total concept and feel is what they're going after here, saying that their use of all these elements together creates an infringement, that it's willful and deliberate, it would kind of have to be, if it is infringement, it would kind of have to be willful. They go back to this title screen, which I do not think is substantially similar, and they go back to this operator shot, which I think these are these look completely different to me. Um, again, having, having a person in a dark room with one beam of light shining in and smoke to give it a... a, a that smoky, uh, dark appearance, that smoky, hazy, dark appearance, that's not copyright protectable. Anybody can create their own smoky image. What else did they do? Did they copy protectable elements? A, a, a military soldier with, with his hand on the butt of a rifle or, or shotgun with a helmet looking down in a smoky room with a single beam of light coming in, that is a concept that is sent a fair that is not protectable. Oh, now they're quoting the reviews. These would be for trademark infringement. You don't really see reviews being used as circumstantial evidence for copyright infringement. That's trademark infringement is where you can use uh, people's testimony of how they were confused by something. Coming from Rainbow Six Siege, this is an exact replica, says one player. 
again, they know it's a replica. It's not from Ubisoft. So they're not, like, we're shifting gears to trademark here. And then you're going to see Ubisoft not make a trademark claim. So if it's an exact replica and this Rainbow Six Siege player knows it's a replica and says that the devs could have at least come up with their own ideas, not trademark infringement. The person is not confused. They know that the infringing material is not from Ubisoft. It's exactly like Rainbow Six Siege. It tries to be great copy of Siege. Amazing. It's a mobile version of Six Siege. It's just like a real console game, but in your hands. A mobile Rainbow Six Siege. Clearly a ripoff. Let's be real. Basically Rainbow Six Siege. Perfect example of Rainbow Six Siege, one of my favorite games. I appreciate your hard work making it like Rainbow Six Siege. Looks exactly like Rainbow Six Siege. None of these people are confused. This is no evidence of actual confusion in the marketplace. They're trying to say this is evidence of copyright infringement because people say that it's like Rainbow Six Siege. I think a jury will have to decide, and I don't think a jury can rely on outside people's testimony of whether they, they, they think it's like it or not. Many fans are describing the game as a mobile version of Rainbow Six Siege. Despite having already received notice of their continued infringement, they continue to mimic Rainbow Six Siege just mere days after Ubisoft announced the launch of its Grand Larceny collection featuring 1920s stylings, eJoy released their own 1920s themed customized Godfather styled costumes. Again, are these things the same or substantially similar? No, you've got a flat cap over here with a whatever this thing is, this short top, I don't know, Stetson. Um, you got this guy with his haircut. This guy over here isn't even carrying a gun. This guy's got a bowler cap or fedora. Uh, this guy's wearing a red shirt. None of these guys are wearing red shirts. This guy's wearing a tie. Okay, this guy's wearing a little bit of a tie, it looks like. They're different. Have you ever, have you ever seen a movie? Do you remember when Finding Nemo and Shark Tale came out at the same time? Was Pixar upset and did they sue Shark Tale because someone came out with a fish movie at the same time as Finding Nemo? No, it's not copyright infringement. You can have two very similar games released at the same time with similar plots. How about Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto? Ubisoft is out of their mind. And then they have literally one claim for relief. Copyright infringement against all defendants, including defendants Google and Apple by failing to remove Area F2 from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. They say that they received notice and that they are outside of their safe harbor. So maybe they took it down and put it back up after a counter notice. Maybe they did not. Maybe they just didn't take it down at all. That would take them outside of their safe harbor. And so they're asking for $150,000 for each copyright infringed, which I'm assuming they're going to try to say each copy sold is $150,000. And they're also claiming they need an injunction. So that's what irreparable injury is claimed for. And there we go, an injunction. So they want an injunction against selling the game. They want all copies of materials that infringe delivered to them. They want an accounting of all sales. They want all monetary relief, actual damages, statutory damages, willful copyright damages, costs and attorney's fees, and other such relief as the court may deem just and proper. I think I, I, I have an opinion. Go ahead and write yours down. My opinion. I don't think this is copyright infringement. I think this is someone who made a knockoff, very much like we've seen lots of ripoffs or knockoffs, but I don't think it's an illegal knockoff. I'm curious to see what a judge slash jury think. Um, is, it, is it close enough to a knockoff or ripoff that you can file a lawsuit over it? Yeah, I'd say reasonable attorneys could disagree on this one. Maybe there's somebody out there who thinks that there really is copyright infringement. Obviously, Mark Mayer from Ubisoft thinks that there's copyright infringement. Um, but like in general, do I think that, that un disinterested parties, disinterested professional lawyers' opinions could think that maybe, yeah, this is copyright infringement, but I think this is a misunderstanding of copyright infringement. I think you're 
completely allowed to release Rainbow Six Siege on mobile. And if they released Ubisoft, released their own copy of Rainbow Six Siege on mobile, it would look like Rainbow Six Siege and Area F2 would look like Area F2. I mean, okay, so is Apex Legends copyright infringement of PUBG? Is Call of Duty Warzone copyright infringement of Apex Legends or PUBG? No, you're allowed to make the same concept as a different expression. I think that Area F2 is a knockoff, but they but they did this. They sat they sat around in a con conference room someplace, virtually or not, and uh, we're like, okay, so it, Rainbow Six Siege is really popular. It's really easy to make because it's you know got simple maps and you, all you got to do is create players and 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 objects like like guns and, and weapons and stuff and 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 maps you don't have to go through and create a terribly in-depth story you don't have to create like a million long maps like borderlands 3 you don't have to be game of the year like like half-life or half-life 2 with this amazing story and long maps and and different gameplay driving trucks flying helicopters gravity guns you don't have to do all that you just have to create projectile weapons some cool gadgets and a bunch of different maps that that are that will you'll stay within the map destructible services and stuff yeah it's i mean it's not easy easy but it's this is not the hardest concept for a video game in the world like i mean in the world of first person shooters this is like the line rider of first person shooters i'm not criticizing it i'm just saying it's a simpler concept than story based you know the legend of zelda is a different game than rainbow six siege so if you're going to copy the legend of zelda you have a lot more work to do than if you're going to copy rainbow six siege so these guys were sitting around a conference room trying to think of something easy to do to make a bunch of money and they decided to copy rainbow six siege and instead of making a copyright infringement of it they probably talked to their lawyers and decided what is change what can, can, what do you have to change in order to keep it from being copyright infringement you have to change the expression you have to make it your own expression and not someone else's expression you can copy the concepts you can copy the game mechanics you can't copy the protectable elements now that's not advice that's not telling all of you to go out and copy somebody's game and then just change a little bit and then say leonard french told you to do so but that happens a lot i actually get that phone call where people will ask how do you copy somebody's work but change enough to get away with it and i'm like well maybe you shouldn't be starting from that that concept maybe you should be starting from how do you create your own concept and then create your own expression it can be similar but just make sure it's not substantially similar those are my thoughts on that we've been talking about this for an hour now uh, sorry, but yeah, let us know what you think of the Ubisoft lawsuit, Rainbow Six Siege versus Area F2 fight. So that is our show. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education program here on YouTube. Thank you very much to all of you who support us financially on a month-to-month -month basis, or even just incidentally, but the month-to-month -month supporters get the benefit of being shouted out here and getting put on my LED panel back there. The $50 plus supporters for May on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law are Joe Tyson, Wes Delge, Nicely Done Defense, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Modrock, Spirit Bear, Yonda Gray, Michael Pierce, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Otta, Cute Grills in your area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, Ugly Grill, Shiloh T, Josh Baker, Gregory, and Rudolph Becherer Jr. And the $5 plus supporters and everybody who's $5 plus appears in the description of the video and on that LED matrix panel. So anyway, I love you all. Have a great week. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Thank you for joining me. Bye.